All right, uh, thank you for staying with us. The conversation, as I said, um, for this first part is about uh, debt relief advocacy by in Nigeria. <laughs> and it's going on at the uh, United Nations General Assembly, the 79th one in New York, of course, is a regular statutory meeting for head of nations and government, by the way. And uh, Nigeria, through the president, Although he was represented by his vice, Hashim Shatima, made a statement, very huge one. You know, he talked about a range of things. He talked about tax as well, that uh, there must be quality. What is source for the goods in Europe, in America, must also be the same in Africa. And then, but, you know, he, he also spoke about uh, debt relief and um, refinancing, the repayment. There must be a review. And then, you know, especially for Nigeria, and he didn't just speak for Nigeria, he spoke for other developing nations as well. Of course, we know the majority of these developing nations are in Africa, on this continent as well. And Nigerians are saying, okay, maybe this is a good move as well. And some are saying, it is not new. Maybe you can push it again. Because he has said it as the largest gathering of head of nations and government. So he has passed the message. But how can this work? Does he only speak to the conversation? He has made the advocacy. How does the lobby go? Because many things are done. The Brentwood institutions, will they agree with some of these as well? Because some of them are our loaners, if I may use this particular word as well, the IMF, uh, you know, and some of the other uh, big guys who are in this conversation together. But we have in the studio somebody who was in government, you know, when the first uh, a big debt relief was made by the Obasanjo government, uh, former governor, I mean, former president Olusegun uh, Obasanjo, Dr. Oluyemi Omotosho Jr., uh, public affairs analyst. He joins us live. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good morning. Good to have you again. Good morning, sir. It's a pleasure being here. Yes, sir. And uh, before we get into the conversation, we'll allow you to see uh, part of uh, that conversation uh, in New York by Vice President Kashim Shatima on behalf of his uh, principal. Similarly, we must ensure that any reform of the international financial system includes comprehensive debt relief measures to enable sustainable financing for development. Countries of the global south cannot make meaningful economic progress without special concessions and a review of their current debt burden. The present administration pays due regard to the imperatives of creating a conducive national environment for investment and the ease of doing business. All right, uh, Dr. Olivia Miyamoto, Nigeria mm. is pushing for debt relief and for Nigeria, of course, and for other developing nations. And uh, you can easily remember, this is not the first time, yeah. it was done by OBJ, uh, President of Passenger. Um, do we think this can fly? Because many persons will say that's more than almost 20 years ago, yeah. and this is 2024. How does this work actually? Well, let me say, in government as well. yeah, it's our right to demand for that. Okay. And I think the president was right in demanding for it. It now depends upon how his own country is and the individual countries. Okay. But let's start from the Obasanjo regime. Hmm. Why did we seek for debt relief? As a member of, as a nation, you can seek for debt cancellation. Hmm. You can seek for debt forgiveness. You can seek for debt discharge. You are owing. You can't meet your obligations. You have problems of unemployment poverty, you know, under development. Mm -hmm. So you have the right, you can ask for that. Mm -hmm. As at 2000 and as at, uh, two, in, in 1964, okay. we had a 13.1 million Naira loan. And it was just to control the Niger Dam. And then between 1971 and 1981, Nigeria, you know, uh, got into the oil boom. Mm -hmm. It was good. And so the borrowing became very large. We are just borrowing anyhow. The military came, everybody was borrowing, and so we ran to what we call debt over overhang. And then, you know, it was a big problem because our, you know, debt service was taking almost 80% or 85% of our revenue. It was not good at all. And so the country was in almost distress economically. And so when Obasi just came in 1999, he made debt relief a major policy. And as at that time, Nigeria was owing 36, 35.99 billion dollars to the Paris Club. The Paris Club debt, you know, contains things like the multilateral debt, the London 
club debt, the non-Paris club debt, the promissory note is about 0.6%, the multilateral was about 7.7%, and then the uh, non-Paris club was about 7 point something. Mm -hmm. And then we have the Paris club debt, which was about 85%. Of the total the, loan. Of the total loan of 36 billion. And so it was the Paris Club were owing mostly. And so who are these Paris Club? Paris Club are countries like United Kingdom, who are owing there about $8,000. You know, France, about $7,000. Germany, about $6,000. Thousand or million. Italy, you know, million, sorry. Okay. Million dollars. And then Italy, Netherlands, USA, we are owing US about $900 million. You know, Finland. Switzerland. The last country on that list, 14 countries, was about, uh, you know, was Finland that we are owing 3 point something million, you know, dollars. At, Why, at that time, we were even owing the uh, Russia Federation about, um, you know, 39 point something million. Mm. And so the total was 36 billion. So about Sanjo embarked on a diplomatic debt relief shuttle. Mm. He visited all those countries I mentioned, and then he lobbied them, he, he, he pleaded with them, he showed concern why they should forgive our debt that even the debt we are paying the interest alone that we are paying is already more than what we are owing they listen to him he used his charisma he used his personality he employed people that are competent he employed the chief economic advisor uh, that is chief philip asiodu who was oxford trained economist uh, who was versatile in that area and that's the man i assisted and then he he, he, he was part, he knew the Paris Club, he knew the debt details. And then, with Chief Asiodu as Chief Economic Advisor to the President, that was the first time we were having a Chief Economic Advisor. He brought in, we brought in uh, Iwe Allah, you know, a Harvard trained uh, econ uh, econ uh, development economy. And so, the first thing the government did was to set up the DMO in 2000. And so, the, DM, the debt management of it was set up to review and restructure the Nigerian debt. And show us exactly how much we are owing. The, 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 the magnitude of threat, how we are paying, how can we pay, can we pay, and so that we can have a paper to present. With the economic team under Chief Asiodu, they were able to do all the paperwork and then were able to present, you know, an articulate position why Nigerian debt should be forgiven. But to forgive debt is not even as easy. It's not easy because the Paris Club is a group of informal groups, you know, that form a creditor you know, collaborative group to assist countries that are owing them. Mm. You can mind my language, to assist countries that are finding it difficult to pay the debt they are owing them, including Nigeria. And so that club is there, they have their condition. You must pay your, you know, areas of debt if you are owing before you can be qualified. You must have, you know, a, an economic policy that is standard. And that time we have needs, the need I mean, the National Economic Empowerment Development Strategy. It was on. And so the IMF must approve your policy support instrument. If it's not approved, you are not qualified. So we have needs, and the IMF was willing to accept. And so Obama just showed prudent management of the economy with the experts he brought in. You know, that government was full of experts. People who are not politicians, who they are technocrats, who are ready to work, and ensure that Nigeria get out of this debt thing. And then 36 billion was among us that time. And at the rate of 135, 134 dollar naira to a dollar, it was about 4.8 trillion naira. And so that diplomatic shot to head, Obama right. just came back and the meeting continued. And on June, to cut it short, yes. 29, 2005, that's from 1999 to 2005, Obama the Paris Club agreed to actually you know, cancel part of our debt. Yeah. And out of the 36, 35 billion or 36 billion, they were ready to cancel that, uh, 18 billion. And then on the condition that we meet all, we have met all those other conditions. And the last condition now is that we should be ready to pay $12 billion. We, the government agreed. And so they cancel 18 billion, we pay 12 billion to write off the whole debt. And so Nigeria was free. At that material time, Nigeria became sovereign. We, we, are, we are became viable. And then we can now use our revenue to do proper development in yeah. the country in terms of poverty alleviation, in terms of educational development, in terms of health development. There are so many developments. We are free, we are relieved. 
And so it was good. Nigeria started on a clean slate. And you know, what we have been doing over the years is to reschedule the debt. We rescheduled those debts in 1986, in 1989, in 1991, and in 2000. And when you are rescheduling debt, you are only postponing the evil day. And we have been doing that. And what are we achieved? We have only paid uh, interest. The capital was still there. Right. And the interest we have even paid was almost superseding the major capital. And so it became unreasonable. And you can't blame the creditors. They are very smart. That is their policy. Right. That is the way they operate. So uh, for Nigeria now, to say we want to go through that uh, trajectory again, it is good. It is our right. Government can do it if they want to do it. But is the government prudent? Do you have the fiscal responsibility bill? Are they showing genuine concern that they want debt forgiveness? If I'm owing you and I'm spending money frivolously, will you, will you be happy to forgive my debt? That is the problem. The kind of uh, the, 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 the pronouncement coming from the president, to me, is, uh, is unexpected, even though it's normal. But it's unexpected, it's a contradiction of his, you know, public and internal, you know, affairs. He has not demonstrated prudent management of our economy. He has shown frivolous, uh, frivolity. You see a government that is spending $5 billion naira or $5 billion on uh, what we call it, nyash. Paying, building a house for the BP, 21 million naira, buying SUV for all parliamentarians, you know, all sorts of frivolities. And then, that then you now go to the same people, you want forgiveness. They look at us, they see us every day. I tell you a story. You know, we went for a meeting one time, and then we observed that, you know, all the people we are negotiating the debt with came with four cars, little, little cars. Those of us who want the money, we came with a uh, wagon, you know, uh, E class. And then what we call the Rolls Royce. And so one man came out and said, Our borrowers are riding expensive cars while we are riding a little, little car. It was a major insult on our personality. Mm -hmm. It shows that is not the way to operate. Right. The story I'm telling you was just the last six or eight years. Mm -hmm. It's not the best. And so, is government really prepared to tell the international community that we are ready for debt forgiveness, the way we are spending money? You know, in terms of uh, the, the, the story you gave, um, you know, I just want to speak. That means the creditors came with smaller cars. Of course, they came with smaller cars. And the cars. borrowers came in with the expensive cars, push cars. cars. And, and it appears that is what we are still doing. Oh, that's exactly what we are All right. doing. Evelyn. All right, uh, Doctor, let's talk about um, one of um, the points you mentioned about uh, the conditions given to countries who want uh, debt, debt forgiveness yeah. or relief. You mentioned about the fact that it must be um, on a good course with the International Monetary Fund. Yes. There are some con yes. con conditions they must fulfill. Yes, there should the be a police support uh, instrument. Do you think that is why we have this particular administration, you know, receiving everything, uh, the advice given by the IMF, <laughs> line and sinker, just because, you know, they are trying to be in the good books of the IMF? Thank you very much. That's a very good question. It doesn't work that way. If you want to borrow money, they are there to lend you money. That is what they do. That is where they make their own money. That is their development plan. They budget for it. So they are prepared to give you. They are looking for people to borrow. It's what have you borrowed or what you borrow, what have you done with it? And then they start giving you all sorts of conditionality. Now, when you run to problems like debt overhang, the next thing you do is you seek for the assistance and they give you other conditions. Part of the conditions is that there must be a policy support instrument. In terms of your, you know, economic strategy to actually get out of the, you know, of the debt so over here. Do you think and the so, economic strategy that so, Nigeria, what, 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 what the I'm, economic team of the president is putting forth, is the one given by the IMF? No, so what, what I'm, the, yes, that's what is, that's what they are doing. That's the condition to borrow. That's the condition to operate. Now, have you demonstrated properly? You are prudent. Have you put in your fiscal responsibility bill into practical, into practice properly? Are you? actually servicing your debt as at when due are you actually delivering the dividends of democracy to your people are you not wasting are you if you are not wasting another they see all this so when it comes to the fact that you want forgiveness now they have other conditions they will give you now it's not like nigeria or africa where you can say hey, you are my friend i can no 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 they are not going to do that they will give you the conditions if you fulfill the conditions they will so his relationship with them 
is a function of his of him demonstrating his charisma in terms of managing Africa's biggest country, the most populous black nation in the world. Do you do you have the, 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 the way you are managing it? Is it prudent enough? Are you are you are you delivering dividends of democracy? Can you be trusted? Those are the things. Obasan just time. Obasan just will be trusted. He demonstrated it. He brought us part that can show that yes, we are ready to manage this economy properly. And the international community saw into that and they agreed to it. And immediately after the debt was forgiven and he paid the other bill, and of course they saw that our reserve was buoyant too. And so they were able to uh, believe in him and then we continue in that trajectory. Unfortunately today, we have moved from that debt relief to a debt trap because what we are even in today is humongous. So move on. And so it's not a function of they are my friends. They can agree with me. No, it's a function of what are you doing with your economy? How are you managing your resources? How, who are the people who are assisting you to manage them? Everything we do here, the world is doing a global world now. They see it every day. They see the way we rig elections. They see how much we spend on elections every time. They see the mong mongos amount. They see the way we manage the resources. They see the, 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 the corruption involved in this system. And I tell you today, from the IMF, they tell us regularly that corruption has increased, corruption has increased. Mm. It's not a joke. It is to tell us we are supposed to be warned to mind the way we behave. So if you are not behaving well, they are not going to listen to you. So for a government that is so frivolous, that is spending money on frivolity, to go to the international community through the United Nations and be seeking for their forgiveness, like I said, is his right. I mean, they may be looking at us with a scorn. I wish the president all the good luck because if the debts are forgiven, it is good for us because our, we will be relieved and then we'll be able to have enough money to spend on eternal things. So are you managing this economy very well? Are we talking to fools? They are not fools. Rather, you know, you are talking to intelligent people who sees you in and out. How do you tell the international community you want, you want debt forgiveness when you are buying 160 million SUV for all parliamentarians. You are spending too much money on yacht. You have another one. You are building a house for 21 million, you know, billion naira for the vice president, your senators, your house of representative people are the highest paid in the world. So, the president Dr. himself is using the Cadillac. And then how do you explain all this? So he will give you the loan. He will forgive you. How 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 are we sure you not go back, you not you not become uh you know a, 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 a more spent trip. And so they don't want a spent trip. They want somebody who can manage the economy for the good of his people. Mm. Are we doing that? If we are not doing that, those people will not listen to us. And the fact remains that, as we are even asking, it's amusing. Why I say it's amusing is that, I mean, you, you, you have not put your house in order. Then you went, you are borrowing. You know they are borrowing now. They are giving you the money. And you are wasting it. And they are seeing it. Then you are telling them to forgive you. The man you are telling to forgive you is managing a family that is uh, very small. He has a small house to live in. He's using a very manageable car. You that is borrowing from him. You have a large family. You know, you, you, you have uh, an expensive car you are maintaining, a fleet of it, and all the rest of that. And then you demonstrate that affluence every minute, and then you come back to the creditor to say, please forgive me. How can he forgive? So you, you think that uh, the statement by Mr. Preston is just one that would just go like that without opening a channel for further discussions or considerations? Well, like I said, the president has not, has not applied. <clears throat> let him apply and let's see their reaction. What I'm trying to say is that for any country that wants to see for, uh, debt forgiveness, you must be prudent. You must demonstrate it. You must show that you are ready to serve your people and serve them properly. You must show you are accountable and transparent. You must show that corruption is reduced to the barest minimum. Corruption is this, in this government is endemically pervasive and it is not acceptable. Right. And so you cannot be wasting public funds on frivolous things and be asking your creditors to forgive you your debt. It's like, uh, it's like you and me, you live, in, you, are, you, are, you are a tenant and then your landlord uh, lives in the same house with you. You are embarking on, the, you know, uh, lavish parties every now and then. You are using an expensive car. And then the way you eat, the way you dress, everything is beyond even the landlord. And at the end of the year, it's telling you, look, I want to increase my 
rent and you are telling him you don't have money to pay, we ask you to go away. That's right. Um, doctor, you know, um, at some point uh, before President uh, Muhammad Bari left, in fact, shortly after he left, we were discussing the 2024 uh, budget, the supplementary budget for 2023 that Inubu made. It was said that Nigeria we were using almost 90% of our <laughs> revenue to service debt, yes. not even to pay, yes. to service the debt. But then a year later, uh, the presidency issued a uh, statement like last month and said they have been able to pay back almost 45% of some of those that they have been servicing it and they have been paying back, actually. Maybe that is the reason and that was what gave them, uh, you know, that um, confidence to say, let's speak to some of these guys at the UNG going on. Now, uh, let me read the statement. At South, uh, Nigeria's public debt stock which includes external and domestic debt, stood at 121.67 trillion era. That is 91.46 billion US dollars in quarter one yeah. of 2024. Yeah. That is between January 2024 and March 2024. Yes. And, you know, from 97.34 trillion yeah. in quarter four, 2023, meaning between October and December, it was 97.34 trillion era. But as of January to as um, March 2024, it stood at 121, you know, 0.67 trillion naira, and total external debt stood at 57.02 trillion naira in quarter one, uh, which was 65.3 trillion. I mean, total domestic debt was 65.65 trillion naira, that equates 49.35 billion naira. Now we are in September 2024. The government have been saying we have been servicing it, and the debt management office. I've always been saying, you know, we have not overshot our threshold. We still have, uh, you know, a bit of a space to do some of what we do. But since Buhari time, many Nigerians, we say you don't have to be an economist to know that. We have done a lot of borrowing. And I just are saying, show us what you have done with the borrowing. And some of, you know, the Buhari and last that time we say, Lagos Baden Express, where the continuation or the completion, uh, the, um, is it a new... Uh, Niger Bridge, yeah, mm. you know, across the east. See, this is some of what you have done with it. And the government have continued again. They have been having their own share of borrowing. And these are the issues. Economists, we say to borrow is not the problem. What you are using it for is not the problem. Well, in Nigeria now, some are saying to borrow is not even a problem. And what they are doing with this is equally a problem. Are we in a good space? We are not. Uh, borrowing we, we, we are just not. I must confess to you that right from independence, Nigeria's economy has been mismanaged thoroughly. In fact, terribly. It has been terribly mismanaged. Even as at the time that of our from the existence of yes, this country, yes, the, 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 we have the, always the, had bad managers. Bad managers, bad, managers, is that what bad president. That is what I'm saying. Does this speak to the quality yes. of our own personality our as own. Nigerians? We have not, we, Nigeria is the only country in the world that is so rich in resources, yet the citizens are so poor. It's an irony. It has always been like It has always been like Look at the debt. That time, Obasanjo was seeking for debt forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Our, the debt to GDP ratio, which you, the, the threshold is supposed to be 30%. Mm -hmm. It was 58%. Mm -hmm. Our debt to revenue was 415%. Our debt to export was 152%. When the debt uh, was cancelled and we, uh, 80 billion was cancelled, mm -hmm. dollar, and then we paid the balance of 12 billion, it changed to, you know, GDP, or debt to GDP, came from 52% to 7%, we were relieved. And then uh, government uh, debt to revenue came from 412% to 58%. And then debt to export, percentage of export, came from 152% to 21%. We are relieved. And so we have more credibility for the international community to deal with us. We can't live in isolation. Mm. Again, we have not learned any lesson. That debt forgiveness that Obasanjo embarked on and we achieved that time was good. But like I said, we have moved from debt relief to debt trap. As of today, see the figures you read out. Mm. Now, again, we are on 121.67 trillion naira. And out of this, you have 48 trillion naira at what, on what we call ways and means. Ways and means are the money lent to the government by the CBN through printing. Mm. So, are we managing the economy very well? We are not. Within three months of this administration, they increase ways and means by 88% within three months. Mm. What have they done with the money? What is our problem? 
that we need to increase ways and made by 88% within uh, six months of this administration. And let me read the figure. In June, they increased by 4.36 trillion. In July, they increased by 4.5, they moved to 4.5 trillion. In August, they took 5.1 trillion. In September, they took 6.4 trillion. In October, moved to 7.2 trillion. In November, 7.6 trillion. In December, they moved to 8.2 trillion. And so, a country can be operating like that, and then you expect the international community to just leave you alone. You now, as we talk today, look at the devaluation of the currency to the extent that uh, our Nigerian dollar, uh, currency has almost become worthless. The, the, you, you, you want to buy milk now, you, you know how much it's cost. Inflation has sent everybody away from the, from, the, from the town. If you get to our airport now, how many people do you see traveling? Between Lagos and Abuja, land is about 400,000 now. Which, which, which civil servant can A do that? Ticket. And then, return ticket. And then, not only that, look at the streets. How many cars are you seeing? As I'm talking to you today, I, I put something on the platform yesterday. In war torn Libya, PMS is sold at 52 naira equivalent per liter. In uh, Iraq, Iran, 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 they are selling their PMS at 26 naira equivalent per liter. And then, if in any of those countries, you take a liter of the PMS, you want to export it, you want to take it outside their border, the penalty is death. And so, when they are exporting their PMS, they have their refineries working. And so, anyone they want to export, they, they sell at the rate of about 1,600 to 2,000 per liter. But for their countries, once you are within their country, mm. you buy a cheap price. Here, a God-given endowment. And has it been... reflected that they are an oil producer. It's an oil producing nation like us. And then, here, a God-given endowment has become a cost to us. That, you know, for you, my salary cannot buy enough fuel for me now to take me to Lagos and back if I'm going with my Ford Jeep. So, you can imagine that. And so, we are paying through our nose. And so, what are we enjoying? Poverty here. We are the poverty headquarters of the world. We are this, we, we, with all our problems, we are qualified for debt relief. But again, with all our problems, are our leaders demonstrating prudence? Are they demonstrating good management of the economy? Do they have a spa that can help them manage the economy properly? They are doing round tripping every day, and people know they are doing it. Quickly, let me just chip in this uh, before evening comes in, uh, because we are pressed for time. This show of capacity, willingness, prudency, you know, by our government, you know, all around, either the state government, the uh, federal government, the executive, the legislature that you are talking about, and that is posturing us as a profligate kind of a people, yeah. and we are seeking debt relief. Now, does this really matter when push comes to shove, when the conversation kicks start, you know, when we are ready? Because the conversation at the UNGA is just um, an advocacy. Now, when they want to get into practice, does it matter? Because you said, maybe we need a team who knows how it goes, who can speak, who have the pedestal to know who to talk to. We all this matter when we are ready. No. The, what matters is when they are giving because us this. There is the moral standard. Look, the world has become a global village. Yeah, you I can't know. exist in isolation. Yeah. The whole world is monitoring and watching you. Mm. And so when they are giving you the loan, they give you conditions that this is how they want you to manage this loan. Mm. In fact, in most cases, you tell them the project you want to do, they tie the money to it, mm. and then they release it in piecemeal. It is after some well, time... we're talking about cancellation and release. Yes, I'm coming. They monitor it. Mm. And why are they monitoring it? Because they want you to be prudent. When they observe you are not prudent, you are not accountable. You are not transparent. Mm. There is widespread corruption and stealing. They will not be comfortable to cancel the debt. Mm. Even though they sympathize with the citizens, they will be hesitant. They will be repulsive. That is the condition. The problem is, you, it, 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 it's moral. It's just a moral obligation. How do you become a spendthrift before your creditors and you expect the same creditor to forgive you your debt? Meanwhile, the debt, the loan they are giving you is, uh, it, that is their work. They'll give you money, so they, they, they charge you interest. They use the interest to develop their own environment. That is the idea. So the more you are owing, the better for them. So when you are talking of debt forgiveness, it has to be a consideration that is real. Now, look at us. We paid the, the council 18 billion. They knew. That look, there is 12 billion naira there that they, we can pay them. No country in the world has ever paid that huge amount of money once to Paris Club, even the London Club. They knew that money we can pay, they knew we can pay. Now, as we are talking now, can we do that? 
how much is our foreign reserve now in terms of naira and dollar can we do that if they say they want to forgive us now you we are talking of um, a, a a debt of 114 or 121 billion dollars as March. as at March. now if they want to forgive us now uh, divide that by two that's about 60 let's say 60 61 billion dollars so if they want to forgive 60 billion do we have 60 billion to offset the balance that we can pull that we can pull from somewhere now if you have managed your economy very well they will see it if you are determined to manage it very well post release they will know because they are experts too mm -hmm. so what i'm trying to say is every behavior every shenanigan from our politicians every misbehavior from them is being monitored by the international community the election we conduct that is rigged they are monitoring it when you read the election and the election ended in court and it ended in crisis you have wasted a lot of funds that you have borrowed and the one you have made yourself they are monitoring that and they know that if they give you more well good luck to you uh, and the, the more you borrow the better for them the way i've said it and the fact is that once you are owing, you must pay when you run to a debt overhand it means that you don't even have enough revenue to service the interest and then you run to all these capital problems and you want them to forgive you your debt mm -hmm. if we forgive you how will you manage the economy yeah. they want to see transparency they yeah. want to see accountability they want to see technocrats mm -hmm. who can manage the economy objectively and that was what obasanjo demonstrated that was why i mentioned chief asiodu mm -hmm. who was also trained and was determined uh, he was a super farm seg in those days and then he knew the Paris Club and the rest of them very well. Okonje Uweala has been working in the World Bank yeah. and he was ready, you know, you know his antecedents now, that he was ready to manage the economy very well. In fact, it was his performance during in the DMO, which she was able to set up with her, and she was the first uh, DG. It was her performance there that made she was able to recommend her to become the finance All minister. Right, you know, when we now took the debt relief. All right, Doctor. A little digression, but still yeah. connected to this matter of discourse, is talking about the cabinet or the economic team yeah. of the president at the time, Olusha Gorbasanjo. You have made mention that these are technocrats that knew what they were doing. Now, let's bring it down to uh, the economic team of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu. We hear that there is going to be a reshuffle of the cabinet, but the with uh, the rumors and also some speculations we've been saying, uh, it doesn't seem like the president wants to shake up his economic team. It seems like he is confident in what his economic team uh, you know, is doing at this time. How do you react to that? Now, do you let, think let, let, the economic team of Mr. President the, the, is the, um, good enough? No, the economic team of the president is not good enough. In fact, the coordinating minister to me, uh, Mr. Edu, well, is not doing enough. The, mini the governor of the central bank is not doing enough. Do you know what? Did you know what happened in the NPC the last few days? The, uh, uh, the, rate the monetary raised. policy committee they came out in their meeting and increased the NPR by from 26.75 to 26 27.75 again, and then thereby increasing the interest on loan. Is that what this economy needs? Now, this economy needs how uh, we can use funds. To actually create wealth. And then these people, this economic team, they believe in taxing, taxing, taxing. Mind you, the same economic team worked with him in Lagos. Yeah. And all they were doing in Lagos was to actually tax everybody to, you know, to an unbearable level. And then you cannot tax an economy to grow. No, no, no. You don't do that. You can only use money you have, your revenue, to create more wealth for the economy. And then when you create more wealth, productivity will be increased. When productivity is increased, your GDP will increase. Unemployment will be reduced. Commerce mm -hmm. will be working. So you now, don't think the strategy our, in Lagos worked? Mo, it didn't work. They were just creating, they were just uh, increasing tax, tax and tax. And that is what they brought from Lagos to this national level. At the national level, you have to look at the macro and the microeconomic you know, policies of the government. And then our fiscal policy and our monetary policy now mm. is not in synergy with our fiscal policy. Right. That is why our Naira is nose diving every day. That is why they are not creating wealth for the economy. Rather, they believe that they can pass this economy to success. But what I'm telling you is there is no nation in the world that has used tax to actually grow its economy. Right. You, what you can use to grow your economy is productivity. Right. And you must create wealth. So they are not, they are not doing wealth. If there is anybody the president should change, is the governor of the central bank and the minister of finance. And then, because I don't know the kind of advice they are even giving him. Right. Because even this 
uh, speech he read in the United Nations. Mm -hmm. This is not the time for him to read it because things are not well with us. And things are not well with us. You are telling, they, we, we, we have become a laughing stock now. They right. just be laughing. Imagine the man who just bought Cadillac is looking for debt forgiveness. <laughs> Ask me the kind of vehicle the Prime Minister of Britain is using. You saw the other one, he was riding a bicycle. Mm -hmm. They use the, the lease of cars. Mm. They live in a very, you know, uh, proper house. And they don't waste money. Oh. You are wasting money every day. There is no president that has shown frivolity mm. like this particular government. Right. And those who check in mm. are the Minister of Finance and the CBN governor. Mm. But I've just told you now, within three months, mm. the CBN governor did not have the capacity to warn the president. He has released more than 24 trillion naira in terms of waste All and right. uh, I, I, I mean, but the economy, how do we, yeah. how do we go forward to that? Exactly. You <laughs> said something that it sounds, it is looking like it's not well with the country economically. We pray it, it gets well yeah. with us, because that is when we get to prosper as a people and as a nation. What does Cecily thank you? Thank you very much. For your much. wealth of experience and, of course, uh, your take on the program this morning. The speech made by Vice President Kashim Shatima, urging, you know, lenders, you know, to show uh, some compassion and, you know, help, help us do a review of our loans, not just for Nigeria, I mean, of our debt rather, not just for Nigeria, but for other developing nations. You know, we we'll take this quick break. Thank and then um, when we return, we'll be speaking about uh, international diplomacy and Nigeria's push for a seat at the United Nations Security Council. Stay with us. <laughs>